Hours after Putin raised the readiness of his nuclear forces, America's doomsday plane took off. It's a flying control center for nuclear conflict, and it was accompanied by jets designed to track ballistic missiles. Experts point to three ways things could escalate, and one way to avoid it. Professor Grauver argues that Russia can't win the war by conventional means. He says it can't afford a long conflict and the world should be deeply concerned about the potential for Putin to take to unconventional means. Economically, Russia is a small country with a GDP only 10% the size of Europe's. To win a protracted war, it would have to dramatically increase its military spending. And Grauver points out that unlike normal investments, which produce a return, new military spending is useless, shrinking the economy and making people poorer with a political price that Putin can't afford. Russia's economy rests on oil and gas exports, and it's piled up over $600 billion in international reserves, but about half of this is now being frozen by sanctions. And when oil and gas prices come down, Russia's war funds will run dry. Grauver asks, what will a dictator do when he realizes that he cannot win the war by conventional means, but by other means? Putin is being pushed into a corner with his nuclear weapons, and there's little optimism over talks with Ukraine. A study of hundreds of conflicts found that mediation increased the chances of resolution. And with deaths mounting on both sides, Talks may only become more difficult without mediation. Angela Merkel or President Xi have been suggested as possible candidates by an advisor to the Russian parliament. Kortunov warns that Putin cannot declare defeat because politically that would be too risky for him. It wouldn't fit with the stories running on Russia's state TV. Защита людей, которые на протяжении восьми лет подвергаются издевательствам, геноциду со стороны Киевска. В Киев? Нет, ну расскажите о своей позиции. Я за Путина. Да Киев никто не бомбит, я этому не верю. Путин такого не мог сделать. Напасть на Украину, тем более. Зачем нападать, если там наши жители живут? Наши все там, Украина, Беларусь. Но это же произошло. Почему? Почему? Не знаю, по новостям другое говорят. Я не слышу, что Путин ввел войска специально для, для войны. School children across Russia are being taught why the liberation mission in Ukraine is a necessity and the danger NATO represents. Вы смотрите открытый урок Института воспитания защитники мира. Special operation. What does it mean? It's when goals lead to peace. We do not attack residential buildings. We do not hit the civilians. We do not destroy the social infrastructure. They're also learning how to distinguish the truth from lies in the huge stream of information, photos and videos that are flooding the internet. People who spread so-called fake information about Russia's military forces can be jailed for up to 15 years. When a woman in Ukraine described the attacks to her parents in Russia, they said it was Ukrainians killing their own people. Putin controls Russian TV and has blocked Facebook and restricted Twitter. He's unlikely to pull out of Ukraine without an agreement that offers him a message to spin at home. And the current war cannot be won by force. Any brief success by Russia will cause a long and bloody insurgency. Ukrainians who queued in freezing temperatures to volunteer are now preparing Kyiv for battle digging trenches in the woods and learning how to apply tourniquets. У меня нету шлема, у меня нету снаряжения, но я вот стою здесь и рою яму вместо того, чтобы 
they are hitting buildings where civilians are living. So we are in danger everywhere. And the only option that we have left is to fight back. A protracted conflict would ramp up the second risk of escalation, a mistake or miscalculation. It was the Russian military that accidentally shot down a commercial aircraft over Ukraine. And just two years ago, Iranians shot down a commercial airliner from Ukraine in their own country. In 2015, uh, Turkey, a NATO country, shot down a Russian jet that had strayed into its airspace. War is chaos. Russians might misidentify attackers as NATO forces or accidentally send missiles into NATO territory. And new hypersonic missiles increase the risk of miscalculation. They travel at over 3,800 miles per hour, a mile per second. Russia test firing its new high-speed hypersonic missile, a missile that the US military currently cannot defend against. It may be unclear if missiles are nuclear armed, and with little or no time to react, they risk triggering a nuclear counterstrike. Russia has 6,200 nuclear weapons, more than any other country. And it's poised to launch within 10 minutes after a quick decision from the president, the defense minister, or the chief of staff. The military holds the launch codes and could launch an attack even without political leaders. And as Russia raises the readiness of its nuclear weapons, it raises the risk of glitches that have nearly sparked nuclear war in the past. In 1983, computers at Russia's Nuclear Early Warning Center reported incoming US missiles. The siren sounded very loudly and I just sat there for a few seconds, staring at the screen with the word LAUNCH displayed in bold red letters. Petrov described his decision to override official processes as 50-50. A third risk is deliberate conventional escalation by either side. There are lots of arms depots sitting in Eastern Europe bound for Ukraine. And if they feel that the West is supplying their enemy, they could escalate by directly targeting those sites. NATO is building up forces along its borders. And as civilian casualties increase, it will become harder to deny calls to intervene. Ukrainian people are desperately asking for the no-fly zone. NATO is not willing to defend. Because NATO is afraid of a World War III, but it is already starting. And these are Ukrainian children who are there taking the hit. Руйнують наші міста, обстрілюють наших людей, наших дітей, житлові квартали, церкви. If it's prolonged this way, yes, you will see they will close the sky, but will lose millions of people. Putin knows he cannot win a conventional war with NATO. The US military alone is far more powerful than Russia's, dwarfing its forces in the air and at sea. And crucially, the US has 11 aircraft carriers, while Russia has just one. Nearly half the world's aircraft carriers belong to the US, and its ships are far larger and more powerful than the rest. The largest US carrier holds over 75 aircraft and 4,500 personnel. It cost $37 billion, more than half of Russia's defense budget. Putin may hope for support from China following a defense agreement. Their combined forces would be vast, including three aircraft carriers, but would remain firmly overpowered by NATO. And the Chinese foreign minister has said he's extremely concerned about the harm to civilians in Ukraine. But Putin is escalating the attack. A man in Ukraine sent this footage of intense shelling near his parents' home. A bomb landed outside their window, but didn't explode. In a wider conflict, Putin would be outgunned, and his foreign minister says that a third world war could only be a nuclear war. Russia is feeling the pressure, as the West isolates it and arms Ukraine. But without mediated talks, we're creating the perfect storm. If the war is going badly um, 
for Putin, then the, his answer is to escalate. He is depending on the fact that he is willing to out-escalate all of his opponents. There's been talk about possibly use of a battlefield nuclear weapon. International pressure needs to be equally focused on a peace deal, and the most realistic option may be the existing Minsk agreement. It's far from perfect, but Ukraine would cede nothing new while Putin could pull out with an acceptable story to spin at home around re-established Ukrainian neutrality. Pressure for serious talks is as urgent as any military help. I fear that we will see increased civilian casualties, increased humanitarian catastrophe, uh, ultimately, potentially the levelling of cities. If you want to see what the Russians do when they, when they destroy a city, look at what happened to Aleppo, look at what happened to Grozny. There is also a risk that our reaction to Ukraine could lead to more nuclear flashpoints around the world. The shock of the Cuban missile crisis helped secure arms control agreements. Three days after the crisis, the major powers agreed to ban weapons tests in the atmosphere and underwater. But it wasn't enough. Feeling overpowered, the Soviet Union tripled its stockpile of nuclear weapons by the end of the decade. If we boost defense budgets too aggressively, the most dangerous weapons stockpiles also swell. Studies show that even a limited nuclear war would darken the skies, sparking a global nuclear winter that could kill over a billion people. Einstein is said to have remarked that he didn't know with what weapons World War III would be fought, but that he knew perfectly well with what weapons World War IV would be fought. Sticks and stones. You could survive potentially, but you wouldn't want to. We actually had some training about this when I was in the army. We have to get togged up in our NBC suits. The slogan was used in the videos, survive to fight. The positive blast wave comes and you will lay down and then you stay down for a bit because then the negative blast wave comes back and that passes over you. And then you are alive to fight. And all I could think about during these training processes was fight over what? Fight over the mutant wastelands? Should one man have the power to end civilization? It's less of a deterrent, more of impunity cover for Putin to go further. The pressure on Russia could be an opportunity to push for multilateral nuclear disarmament. It's optimistic, but history has taken sharper turns. For decades, 10% of US light bulbs were powered by uranium from Russian warheads sent to American nuclear power plants. But the nuclear threat is rising again. Russia is building a new doomsday plane, which, like the US plane, will be windowless and shielded against nuclear effects. For the rest of us, there will be no escape. Scientists are calling for people to pay attention, hold governments accountable, and make sure they improve the situation, rather than making it worse. These are the targets of nuclear weapons which bypass the defensive advantage of human spirit. Missiles don't question their mission. Our response to Ukraine could intensify the risk or begin the process of removing it. Join us to help build a consensus for nuclear disarmament. And if you'd like to help Ukrainian refugees, experts recommend donating money rather than packages to provide exactly what people need. Thank you.